I think the main thing that called to this work is um, I see myself and my family in the people that I work with and serve. When my family came here, um, they didn't have anyone to help out or navigate the systems. So I just want to be that person uh, for the folks that I work with. This grassroots organization that really centers people with lived experience, and that's what called me, and that's why I, I'm with Rock and I'm part of Rock. Residents Organizing for Change is it's about community. It's about people with lived experience coming together to build power and to create change, to create the community that we want to see in our state. My name is Erin Meehan, and I am a resident in Gresham of affordable housing. I uh, have a Section 8 voucher. I feel like that lawmakers and, and people and community organizations and whatnot, they, they're great and they are supportive, but they don't really know what it's like. Not, not everybody um, goes through being houseless or being uh, without shelter, which is a human basic need. And um, I think that it's real important that you get information from those people because they know what's going on and what they need and what's not working. Before I started doing this and everything, I really didn't have a voice. I really was kind of shy and talking to people. And now it's kind of opened me up in that to gang, uh, learn people's stories and know I'm not the only one that have been in this situation. And I'm able to actually advocate for people who don't have a voice that aren't heard in that. Within five years, I had moved eight different times. I lived out of my car for a couple months, being, you know, trying to find a place uh, that there weren't any, there weren't enough apartments. I mean, if you haven't had a voucher, if you haven't ha have lived in affordable housing, if you haven't experienced uh, housing instability or some type of um, you know, difficulty in your life, it's really hard to step in those shoes. Not to say that individuals can't obviously empathize, um, but it's really, really hard to really see the world through the eyes of a person who've experienced that, the, the difficulties. We started meeting folks with amazing stories who wanted to join this network. And in the fall of 2019, we had our first ever summit. It was in person. And we had a chance to like meet one another and to talk about why we're, we were there and what it meant to organize and build power and what our vision for housing justice in Oregon looked like. About halfway through the day, I remember Raina and I came together and we said to one another, we're not in charge anymore. And it was this amazing moment where residents had taken charge of what we were trying to build because they could see the potential for REC and they could see this amazing group of people coming together and coalescing around this idea and they wanted to be part of that. What makes REC special to me is that it is ours. We are residents and we made it. And to have an organization of staff members in, you know, just embrace us and treat us as equals, wow, that's amazing. Going up and talking uh, in front of legislators, talking in front of community boards, um, presenting at, at conferences and things, like, people stop and listen. Their voices are so important. Their lived experience brings to the table, the, makes the words alive. When you're advocating with legislation or legislators, they like to hear your stories um, and they need to see you and where you're at and what you're suffering from. It's just a perfect storm. That's kind of how I look at it. It's a perfect storm. There they are. Here we are. And now they know us so well, they know we're not going to go away. It just reminds me that our voices matter and that feels good. Yo me jalo a alguien y ella se jala a otra persona y así van creciendo cada quien. Así es como se crece el movimiento. Como cuando uno va a una fiesta, ¿verdad? ¿Qué es lo que haces? Invitas a 10 personas. ¿Por qué? Porque la pachanga se pone más buena, ¿verdad? <laughs> I'm doing this because I'm grateful. I am so grateful that I have a home to live in. And I know that if I didn't have a home that was low income, I would be homeless. I'm one of the lucky few and I just, I don't like that feeling. So I'm going to advocate as much as I can so that I'm one of many and all who have affordable, safe housing.